So today I have this power supply board. It's out of a Samsung Plasma, and the model on the Plasma is PN59D, as in David, 550C1. The power supply board is part number BN44-00445A. That's Boy Nancy 44-00445 Adam. And the problem is the set came in with a uh, a blown fuse. Well, actually, I did a service call on this one, so I had a completely uh, a blown fuse. And these transistors over here in the uh, power factor correction circuit are both uh, shorted. Well, actually, I believe only one shorted. We'll find that out in a moment when I pull them out of circuit. But I wanted to show you this real quick before I even uh, touched them, tried to pull them out. One of the problems that these sets have is, as you can see, there's a lot of uh, silicone RTV uh, near these parts and what they do is they they silicone over the leads so uh, dust doesn't collect on the leads and ca and cause discharge uh, because a field effect transistor like this is a very high impedance input device and it's very easy for it to be triggered by uh, conductive dust which I've seen uh, quite often if uh, the customer has a fireplace or if they burn a lot of candles the dust becomes conductive so we've got those uh, right there that are covered in silicone and then if I if I roll this around over here You can see we've got another one uh, Right here. That's got some silicone on it as well uh, Some of the other ones you'll find this last transistor over here is covered in silicone I've had those fail as well as the uh, ones over here in the power factor correction Circuit I've got an extra fuse up here just for testing Ready to go. So uh, let me show you this thing real quick Okay, so here's the lead of one of the two uh, field effect transistors. This is the one I believe initially caused the problem. And if you look at the gate lead very closely, you can actually see a ring all the way around it. And that's part of the problem. Now this is the rectifier diode here. And then this is the other field effect transistor over here. Uh, also, like I was telling you, I've had problems with, uh, let me see if I can figure out where I am here. I have it zoomed in so terribly far. Uh, there's one of the driver transistors. Okay, here's another uh, field effect transistor that's in the VAVS power supply, and you can see it has rings. So if you have one of these sets, definitely address this. Go ahead and uh, get it soldered up just as quick as you possibly can. Let's see if I can find the other one here. I don't think I have the tripod kind of in the way, so I can't get over to it quite. Yep, there we go. Now on this one, they've actually uh, used rivets on the um, gate and drain, but not on the source tab. Just one note real quick before I forget. Um, we've got uh, some resistors and some diodes on the gate here of the field effect transistor, and they are important to the operation of the unit. You can see uh, very hard, uh, here's a 4R7, which is a 4.7 ohm resistor. This one looks good. A lot of times I'll see these where they're actually burnt up. This is a 20 ohm resistor, and you can see that it's across that diode right there, which actually feeds the gate. This is a 10K resistor to ground off the gate. This is just simply a ferrite bead to reduce any noise on the line. But uh, I've had problems with this diode being defective. I've had problems with these resistors burning up when this uh, transistor fails. And let's take a quick peek over here on the other side and see what they look like. They all look pretty good too. So what I'll normally do is if you take this 4.7 ohm resistor out of circuit, you can measure the diode to make sure the diode's good. Uh, pretty much if the 4.7 ohm resistor does test good, you can almost be assured that the diode is good as well. And then there's the 20 ohm resistor you want to measure as well. It takes a lot to burn up a 10,000 ohm resistor, but it, it definitely does happen. Okay, I've went ahead and removed both FETs from the board, and I've got my ohmmeter on the diode range. And with this particular ohmmeter, when it is in the diode range, it actually displays the voltage, not resistance readings. So if I measure a regular diode and I see three-tenths of a volt, 
then that's what the voltage drop is across the diode. So on the first one, I'm going to go drain to source, and I see a dead short. I'm going to go gate to drain. It's shorted all the way around, so it is a unusable transistor. Now on the second one, I'm going to measure drain to source, and I see a good uh, junction right there, 0.522. Next I'm going to reverse bias it by going gate to source, and I still see the same, so I'm going to forward bias it with the positive on the gate, and I'm going to go back and read again, I see 169. So you can definitely check your FETs by using that method. Now it reads completely open with the positive on the drain and the negative on the source. And if I put the positive on the gate, then I can actually read a junction there. Reverse, it's a low, low junction. If I put negative on the gate now and reread the junction again, I get a high right there. So that FED is working perfectly well, it's good. I'm gonna go ahead and replace them both at the same time anyhow. It's kind of complicated testing FETs. You can test them with an ohmmeter. You just have to know how to turn the junctions on and off. They have such a high impedance, like I was saying just a moment ago, that even though I've only touched the probe on there for just a second, it still has enough, re enough uh, charge to keep that junction uh, turned on just from the capacitance left in the field effect transistor. It doesn't require, it, it actually does require a constant source for it to work properly, but I'm measuring under no load or virtually no load to speak of. Okay, so next I've got, uh, I just wanna measure these components very quickly here. This, like I said, is a ferrite uh, core ferrite bead and it should read shorter, which is good. I wanna read 4.7 ohms across this resistor I see 4.8, that's good, and I want to read about 20 ohms across this one, 20.1. Let's do it on the other side as well. Make sure the ferrite didn't get blown open, it's good. 4.7 ohms here, and I want to see 20 ohms across that. Now let's go back on the diode scale. There are a couple diodes over here. Let's just see what we get as we read across them. So I see a good junction there. This one's actually going to be a transistor. Oh, my hands are going to be in the way for a second here. I see both junctions on that transistor, so that's good. One junction, second junction, that's good. Let's do the same thing over here. And I'll switch the lead so I don't get my hands too terribly in the way. So I see both junctions, they look good here. Switch the leads back. One one is a NPN transistor, and the other one is PNP, which is why I have to reverse the leads. Yep, I see both junctions. So I'm pretty uh, confident that all these components in this circuit are still good. So I'm going to go ahead and replace the FETs, and we'll go ahead and try to force the uh, power supply board on just to measure across the filter capacitors. There are three large uh, filter capacitors on this board right here and as I recall they are in series or no they're in parallel with each other so um, you'll get a, a shock across all three of them uh, under normal circumstances with the set operated normally you should see uh, about 390 volts across these three capacitors with power factor correction on and so what we're going to be able to do is go over here to the uh, uh, jack over here and we're going to be able to force the power supply on with PS on. I'll measure the voltage on it here in just a little bit and we'll force it on and that should turn on power factor correction and we should measure that voltage and if that's the case then we should have a good working power supply board and a good working TV. So I thought I'd show you the part number real quick on the replacement FET which is the same. I have to use a flashlight. Uh, it is a 6R190C6. 6R190C6. Uh, replacement FET. That's the same as the part number on the original FET as well. Let's try to get one up right next to it here. And try to get 
try to get the light on it so you can read it. 60190C6. So we have the exact replacement field effect transistor here. So I've got my new FETs in the board. Um, one thing, make sure you apply a little bit of heat sink compound to the back of the uh, FET and to the uh, front of the heat sink just to make sure you get good uh, thermal conduction. Uh, these do generate a little bit of heat, not too terribly much. So let's go ahead and solder them in place now. All right, now I always like to use a little extra solder. It provides a good bond to the circuit board, especially on the pins that do not have the rivets. I'm going to solder the source and the uh, drain first and the gate last. The gate is the most sensitive. Make sure that you are using ESD precautions. Um, I have a grounded tip soldering iron. Well, actually, I, I do not have a tip that's grounded. I've eliminated the ground on my soldering iron tip, and I am using a high-value resistor to dissipate the static electricity. I do have a 1 million ohm resistor to ground, and the reason I've done that on my soldering iron is so that if I do come in contact with uh, the live line, inadvertently I leave a set plugged in, that the tip of my soldering iron is not actually grounded, so I don't have a path to ground. I still do have uh, static dissipation with the million ohm resistor, but I don't have a direct path to ground, so I won't do any damage to the set. And just real quick, I am going to go ahead and touch up the other uh, field effect transistors over here, as well as on the uh, little bit farther down the circuit board, there's a complete row of rectifier diodes. Going to go ahead and solder all those up. I've had problems with the transformers breaking loose as well, so I'm going to go ahead and Resolder the uh, transformers. There's one right here. Uh, I'll show you the front of the board, make it easier. The two uh, power factor correction transformers. There's the uh, VAVS power supply as well as the uh, uh, auxiliary voltages power supply. And on, oh, excuse me, this one is the standby power supply. This is the main as well as auxiliary voltage power supplies. So I'm going to go ahead and solder those up as well. Okay, so I've got my uh, power supply here. I've got it connected to power. I've replaced the fuse. The new FETs are in the board. And these three pins right here on this connector. And the connector is um, CN601, it looks like. Possibly 801. I can't quite make it out. It's a little too far away. Can't quite see it in the camera as well. The first pin is power supply on-off. It's 4.2 volts. The second pin is the 5 volt standby, and it's 5.28. And the third pin is ground. And so what this is telling me, with power supply on-off being high, I need to force it low. So what I'm going to do is attach a resistor from pin 1 to pin 3. Now I'm just going to use uh, probably close to a 1,000 ohm resistor to begin with. And that should be enough to force the power supply on. Okay, so all I've done here is I've attached a resistor. I, I determined that the 1,000 ohm resistor was too much. I went down to a much lower value resistor, 220 ohms. And it's just attached between pin 1, which is the power supply on command, and pin 3, which is ground. The 1,000 ohm resistor would only let me get the power supply on command down to about 1.7 volts. That wasn't enough to trigger it on. I believe it had to get closer to half a volt. Uh, to six tenths of a volt to trigger the unit on. So 220 ohm resistor did that just fine. Okay, so I'm ready to give this a try now. I've got my voltmeter set up. I'm going to put it on the uh, 600 volt range to get it ready. Turn the power supply on. You can hear a second click afterwards. I don't know if you can hear it on the camera or not. And let's go ahead and measure the voltage across the capacitors here. I get 386 volts. Obviously I have the leads backwards, but that doesn't matter with an auto ranging meter. Here we go, 386 and a half volts. All three of them should be the same and that's telling me that the power factor correction circuit is indeed functioning correctly. If it, if it were to have a problem, um, it would have blown out those new transistors almost instantaneously, probably within the first cycle. So it looks like another successful repair here. Be able to get this customer back going once again. Once again, thank you for your views, your comments, your supports. I try to answer questions as much as I possibly can, but unfortunately I cannot answer everyone. 
With your help, we can keep these things out of the recycle bin, out of the landfill, and we can keep these plasma TVs going because, uh, as I understand it, no one is manufacturing good quality plasmas at this point. I believe Samsung has gotten out of the plasma TV business completely. Panasonic got out of it a little over a year ago. So unfortunately, there's no finding good plasma TVs, which in my estimation, have a much better picture quality than the LEDs or the LCD sets ever thought of having. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter at NorCal715. Everybody have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.